Well, good morning, everyone. It is a rather calm morning here in Death Valley. Just a little bit of clouds up in the sky, but mostly blue sky. And I just heard on the radio that there is going to be uh, a wind advisory for some areas nearby. So I uh, could definitely have a little bit of wind here, which may explain the clouds right now. Um, but my goal for this morning is to head to a canyon I've never been to before. Uh, just to scatter it out and get some ideas for the days to come. And there's a couple other areas nearby I'd like to scout as well. And if I don't find anything in this area I'd like to shoot today, I'll head back to where I was yesterday evening and see about shooting some of the other texture shots I found over there. So, but we'll see what happens. Got my cup of tea here, got my breakfast ready. So I'm going to enjoy that, then head over the canyon and see what I could find. Well, that sure was a lot of fun. Scrambling around the canyon and checking everything out. And there's a lot of beauty all around, but man, it would be pretty difficult to photograph. Uh, one of the things I look for is contrast and color contrast and texture contrast and subject. And a lot of stuff in the canyon was all very much the same, which makes it a little bit difficult in that regard. But in any case, it was really fun to do. I'm gonna head over to the salt flats and check out something I saw in the satellite imagery. Let's see how that looks. And probably grab some lunch and head over the dunes and see about setting up a composition on one of the other subjects I found yesterday. Because the skies are still super blue right now. Just a few tiny little clouds along Telescope Peak. But looking forward to checking out some more stuff and seeing what else I can find. So I drove a couple miles or so and then wandered out on the salt flats to an area that I'd been checking out on the satellite maps. It shows that there's a little ravine with some water in it, which could very well have some potential. Coming up on it right here, you'll see the river flowing through there and around back over there. So pretty cool to see this out here. It's something you definitely cannot see from the road. But I kept hearing the sound, which sounded like cars going by, but there was never really any cars going by. And I figured that it was actually the sound of wind really high up on that mountain there. And I figured that because I started looking up the valley there and there's just a big dust cloud up that way. Now when the last times I saw something like that, um, you know, it was nice and calm like it is right now, but as soon as that sweeps over, man, it just got incredibly windy. And the weather forecast for Southern California was mentioning gusts in the 60 to 80 mile an hour range in the mountains, which I do not doubt that. So we'll see what happens this evening with regard to the photo I have planned, uh, because if it's windy, I'm not gonna be able to shoot it, but that scene's not changing at all. But in the meantime, I'm gonna wander along here, check out this little river here, and see if I can find some interesting way of uh, finding a composition and aligning some elements here. But beautiful here and we'll see what happens with the wind.
several hours have passed and it sure has gotten windy. It's a little bit calmer right now, but the skies are just really just gray. All the dust in the air. And uh, I'm not quite sure what to expect for the rest of the today. Um, fairly certain that I will not be able to photograph that scene in the dunes today because not only will it be windy, uh, but also there's so much dust in the air, the light is going to be rather diffused. And I think I need something closer to a, a blue hour light. But I'm just wandering right now. And I've come to an area where there are some decent mud cracks. You see behind me here. And this area hasn't had some good mud cracks in a few years or so. But when I was driving by, I saw that there was some fairly fresh mud. And so I'm just wandering around, taking it all in. And even though I'm not able to shoot any photos right now because of the wind and the light's a little bit flat, I gotta say it's uh, pretty invigorating being out here with the, the wind howling and, and uh, just taking some time to relax a little bit and just enjoy my surroundings. So these are the days, sort of like the, uh, the first full day when I was in Zion on my fall trip where the weather wasn't ideal for photography, but that was a day where I spent a lot of time just wandering around and coming up with ideas of things to photograph in the days after that. And then the day after that, I shot four subjects in a day, so we'll see what happens here in Death Valley, but check out this mud. Some nice mud cracks there. So. There's definitely some potential in this area for some close-up shots of the mud. But I can keep wandering and see what else I can find. So I'm just continuing to wander around here and guess what I found? Yet another Mylar balloon. So this is the fourth one today. And I make a point of picking them all up and I've actually saved every single Mylar balloon that I've cleaned up through the years. Because uh, I have a book project in mind. Um, to raise awareness of the fact that these things can travel hundreds of miles and they just become flying trash. But also there is a, a story component of it because you know, a balloon like this could have been at someone's graduation or a birthday party, you know, surrounded by friends and family. And now here it is just decaying out in the desert and causing harm. And uh, so get this thing cleaned up and keep wandering around and see more balloons I can find. Says celebrate. I guess on birthday. They're almost always birthday. But this is what happens. It just becomes trash. I'm gonna hold on to this one and put it with all the others that are in my backpack right now. So let me start by saying I don't hate all people, just idiots. I mean, I'm in a protected area right now, I'm walking along a boardwalk, and then right toward the beginning of the area there is this Jeep that has deliberately drove, driven off the road, uh, right past a sign that says, you know, stay on the road, and then they set up camp in an area where you're not supposed to camp at all. So I did photograph the Jeep got the license plate and I'll be swinging by the ranger's office a little today to make a report on that but that's how my day is starting but still a bit windy here not as bad as yesterday but there's still a lot of dust in the air and so I'm going to go revisit an area that in past years had some uh, potential with regard to subjects and uh, see if it's changed at all and then if this dust settles down more toward the evening I've got some ideas as far as some subjects to photograph but don't be an idiot. People don't like idiots. Well, idiots probably like idiots. That's how we get more idiots, but we need less idiots. So let's leave it at that.
Well, the sun is now up and it's uh, going through quite a bit of dust in the air. So it's a very soft, warm light right now, which is actually quite beautiful. Um, but I hiked over here to an area where two years ago I shot a photo and I wasn't completely satisfied with the composition, uh, but also it was windy at the time, so that photo was affected by the wind. Uh, but if you look back behind me here, you'll see this area with this grass and it looks like a muddy, mucky mess right now because uh, there has been some rain that has gone through here and that area got flooded out a bit. Uh, but a couple years ago it was very dry and you had this very interesting graphic look with these grasses that are encrusted in salt and uh, had all these interesting shapes. But not going to make for a subject this year, but definitely something to come back to each year and see how this area changes, uh, especially if it's more of a dry year. But Kind of cool to check up on it and actually there's this big rock right down here and I put that rock there a couple of years ago to use as a uh, place to put my tripod leg. So kind of fun to see that. But I'm gonna keep wandering and see what else I could find. Well, several hours have passed and it is now mid afternoon. And uh, earlier today, I went over to the ranger station and filed a report about that Jeep from this morning. Went back to camp, had some lunch, uh, did a little wandering, and now I came to an area where I was yesterday, and I found an area with some very interesting mud patterns, with some really cool cracked mud. And the skies are blue right now. There's no clouds up there. The dust clouds from this morning are gone. The, the wind has had its moments uh, this afternoon, but it's calming down a little bit. And the usual trend here in Death Valley on a clear day is usually the wind dies down a little bit as you get closer to sunset, and that's what I'm counting on. Because this back here is the subject that I found. So it was like this little creek of dried mud cracks, which looks really cool. And it's set against this larger plain with some older, uh, more flat uh, dried mud tiles. So it's it's got a really interesting look to it. So I set up a vertical composition with a little bit of a diagonal basis to that stream there. And I use photo pills to figure out where the sun is gonna set on the horizon. And my shadow uh, for my camera should swing out of view to the right, so it shouldn't be a factor. And I'm going for that moment when the sun is really low on the horizon, that really low angle light, and then maybe blue hour shot. But got a couple hours to kill. We'll see what happens with the wind, but it'd be pretty awesome to expose a little film today. So we'll see what happens. So we've got about 15, 20 minutes until the sun sets partially back behind the mountains there. And that's the very moment when I want to expose the film, when you have this directional, warm, yet cool light that's also a bit soft. Uh, it's a bit tricky to do because I got the wind here. And so I'm gonna use a big golf umbrella to block the camera while juggling a stopwatch and a cable release and a light meter. And who, who knows what's gonna happen. But I'm gonna give it my best shot. I'm gonna give it a good try. And we'll see how it looks. And then after the sun does set, then I want to do more of a blue hour exposure um, when there is just a bit of a softer light on the scene. So we'll see on that. But I'm really hoping the wind calms down because it'll make it so much easier on me. But uh, we'll see. Well, that was certainly a very interesting experience. Uh, the wind has died down now, but it was definitely quite active while I was exposing the film. 
And I honestly have no clue how effective I was with the umbrella for sheltering the camera. Um, shutter speeds, I think one of them was five seconds. I can't remember what the other one was, maybe uh, two and a half seconds. Um, so we'll see. I didn't really get a good look at the light on the subject as I was photographing it, just because I was juggling so many things. So I'm hoping the light looked pretty decent. I did expose a third sheet of Provia after the first two, just in the more subdued light, as you see right now. But we'll see. I was juggling a lot of stuff, and we'll see how well this technique worked. Uh, but I'm going to get things packed up, head back to camp, get some dinner, and figure out what I'm going to do for tomorrow, because i got a couple more subjects I like to photograph, and uh, conditions like this would be nice, of course, minus the wind. It's a whole lot less juggling. But head back to camp now, get some dinner, and uh, relax a little bit. After two days of wind, the silence of Death Valley returned under a canopy of emerging stars amid the soft pastel tones of twilight. I returned to my truck with a sense of satisfaction and look forward to the opportunities that would await in the days to come. Of the three sheets of film I exposed that evening, the first two were affected by the wind. I tried my best with the umbrella, but the wind came from an angle that was difficult to block. My third and final image was taken much later, and despite having an even longer exposure, it's incredibly sharp thanks to a brief lull in the wind. The soft blue hour light works well for the subject, and I like the interesting fractal shaped mud cracks in the foreground. The dried mud here is unlike anything I've seen before in Death Valley, and I'm glad the wind was kind enough to cooperate. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints in my portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.